Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Coachman, and this is Super Bowl Sunday on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. With that, it's time for Super Bowl 53. For the call, let's go to Atlanta, as it is my pleasure to hand it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Alongside my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We are honored to be here for the biggest spectacle in sports, the Super Bowl. Are you ready, partner? I am more than ready, and I love the word you used, honored, because it is an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here. My excitement is just about to burst through the booth. I can't wait to do this. Well, and sitting with both of these teams and talking in the meetings and media day and all the hoopla that goes into this, there was one common theme. They're ready to stop the talking and start playing football. Yeah, they were probably ready a while ago. Now they can just focus on it. It's done. The only talking they have to worry about now is post-game, and they hope that they'll be talking as the winning team. And we'll see. You know both sides come in with a game plan to start. We'll see how the adjustments are made throughout because there are always adjustments in this game. I want to see if they come out conservative, trying to minimize error or if they have enough confidence to attack early and try and take advantage of the other team's nervousness. After Joe Namath and the guarantee, we are underway in Super Bowl 53. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here come the Patriots to take over on offense. They're led out by a man who started more Super Bowls than anyone in NFL history, the great Tom Brady. I can't help but admire the career Tom Brady has had. The numbers are off the charts. The Super Bowl championships and rings, we know that they are incredible. But how about the durability? Had one season that he missed, most of that season because of a knee injury. The rest of the time, he answers the bell and wills his team to victory more times than not. And we keep hearing from people who are waiting to see the drop off in his play. I'd quit worrying about it. I'd quit looking for it. He says he wants to play until he's 45. Is there any reason to doubt him? His skills have shown no sign of declining. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They establish the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. Trying for Edelman again, this time he's got it. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. Brady to his old reliable Edelman, and the Patriots have a first down. And finding Edelman underneath, that's a recipe for success. Typical route for a good slot receiver, and Edelman's one of the best in the game. Knows how to go inside what one of my college coaches used to call the briar patch. Got to go in there where it's tough and make those tough catches. And not only can he do it, he can often run away from people after the catch. Now Brady gets away with one. Lucky could have been intercepted, but it falls to the ground. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. And defensive tackle Aaron Donald, when you evaluate him, you're looking for flaws. Can't find any. This guy has the ability to single-handedly take over a game. 
wrecks it inside, outside. You can't run it against him. And good luck trying to throw it downfield when he's in the face of the quarterback. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Here's Brady to throw. To the left side and complete for Julian Edelman. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 23 yards on the play. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A really nice gain of 25 yards. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Got the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Throwing now is Brady. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. The 40. He was looking for Brock that time. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Orange, orange, orange. After the interception, here's goal. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Gerald Everett is tied in, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them. And we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you. The, the Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Adrian Claymore in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. He's going to air it out deep for Hope, and he fires one that's intercepted. John Johnson with the INT, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And it's third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks... They'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground 
instead going to an opposite color jersey. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, you need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, he got a couple more. Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. Samson Abukum coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going the wrong direction for the offensive back. And this will be caught at the 30. Chris Hogan. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. With a first touchdown of this Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Pats have taken the early lead. And on the grandest of stages, with the whole world watching the Super Bowl, they come out and get the first points. I don't know how you feel about Brandon, but for me, watching the beginning of the Super Bowl, I've often wondered how come it's not just a fumble fest? How come the ball's not all over the place? The nerves, the interim in between of the two weeks waiting for the game. But this team came out and handled it just like it was a regular season walk in the park. Terrific start. Gaskowski the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Gaskowski now out to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. So that means they have to change up what they're doing, and for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving it to more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley, and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. All right, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Call. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six. And just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visit. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. The point after try for Goskowski. Goskowski with the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Ladies! On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They've got a third down and five to start right. things out. Intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. So after the INT, it's Brady. And he lets go a laser pulled in by Edelman. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. Now they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. And Owen will be intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. He was a 1,000-yard receiver during the regular season, and that's his first catch of this Super Bowl, and he picks up the first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first down, it's Gurley. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, 
only way to play good defense. This is caught. It's Kurtz. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. He got 29 yards that time. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. A shotgun snap for gone. And that's incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. The Rams on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at a third and goal here. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back on Super Bowl Sunday after this. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And this offense on third down today, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and goal. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Six yards puts him right on the doorstep, but now it'll be fourth and goal. To me, this isn't even a question. I think that they'll go. When they have a chance to put a dent in the lead, even with a whole second half to play, I think they have to do it. This isn't a risk. This is a necessity. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? The wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Tom Brady and the Patriot offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to air it out deep for Hogan. And he couldn't hang on. Would have been their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. Pretty lucky to get the football back. Had his target out there waving the arms, saying I'm open, but maybe you didn't see him quick enough. And I know the jokes are always about defensive backs' hands. What really actually happens, you don't get many opportunities. You get over anxious, and you start to think about taking it away and going the other way instead of focusing and catching the ball. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. They go play action here on first down. Going for it all. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball, but he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. He has several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown, and frankly, that should have been another pick right there. Now a play fake, Brady. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. 
So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the pass three. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. So we've come upon halftime here in Super Bowl 53. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight. As we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. It has been a remarkable first season in the studio for me. I want to thank you guys so much. As I send it over one final time, for the second half call of Super Bowl 53 to Brandon and Charles in Atlanta. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do really I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? He's going to look deep for Edelman. He's got a man complete. Brady and Edelman hook up for a big one, 48 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the... Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. Aaron Donald coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. That's a loss of eight yards there to bring up third. I mean, that was an example of why offensive linemen might want rearview mirrors at times because you have your assignments to block, but if you can see what's going on in the backfield, it may be... The guy carrying the ball is headed in another direction. It might change what you do up front, but if they can't see that, and he's not in sync with what they're doing up front, well, this is when you end up with plays like this. A bad one for the offense, a really good one for the defense. Allen on the punt as he gets this one away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's a under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Adrian Claymore in there to drop 
stop him for his second sack now here tonight. How about that, partner? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If you get... Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And they finally are able to take him down at the opposite 47. A huge play that time for the Rams. 41 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Rush coming, and he's taken down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now left, he's got it to Everett. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. One quarter remains in Super Bowl 53. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports as we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Throwing on first down is Brady. And Philip Dorsett holds it in. And now running right through it. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. He got 29 yards that time. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Julian Edelman, the intended receiver, that'll bring up second down. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Brady again here on second and 10. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Dante Fowler. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you think maybe you're just sitting on and trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. On second and ten, gone. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. The Rams on third down. It's been a problem, just one for seven thus far. This is third down and 12. From the gun, here's gone. And that is incomplete. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. 
As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Right side complete. That's Woods. Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Goff on first down. Incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league. Totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. But sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. And Cooks hands it over the middle. His second catch in the Super Bowl, and it's good enough for a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And a diving grab. I think he got that, yes. A really nice gain of 25 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him oh, as I okay. see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play on the football. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Time for a break. We're back to crown a champion after this. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Again, gone. He's going to let it fly and almost intercepted. That would have been his third pick in this game alone. Instead, fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. They begin with Michelle on the ground. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. On second down, Michelle pushing through the contact. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. New England on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. They'll run it here. This is James White. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 23. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. First and ten, gone. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Adrian Claymore in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. To throw on second down is gone. And incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Here's Gall. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Trying to get it to Woods. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's then right. Then with the Eagles. That's right. Then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. Time for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. And it's another Super Bowl title for the New England Patriots. And when this moment comes, I think you look back at all the blood, sweat, and tears, the offseason, the workouts, training camp, week one, two, three, all building up now to say you're a Super Bowl champion. It's worth it. It certainly is, and rarely do we have a team that hoists the Lombardi Trophy that didn't have their share of bumps along the way, didn't have to face some adversity in the journey. And now they get to just enjoy it and revel in it. And all offseason, They'll be signing their autographs with Super Bowl champion underneath them. And they end this year just how everybody wants to end the year holding the Lombardi Trophy. What a season for them. What a ride it's been for us as well here in the booth. For Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gunn. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next season right here on EA Sports.